cooker alarm. You're cheating. <laughs> Does the call. If it's in a busy room, if somebody wants to talk to me, it's quite not to talk to me, but you have to get my attention first. And there's no good calling me from the other side of the room. Okay? So what you do is you call Nevis, you give him a biscuit, and you go, call Tom, call Tom. <laughs> What he does is he pads me and then he'll take me back to the person who's just called. The other thing he's done recently is new trick. New trick is he tells me. He also tells me when the postman's been. I spend a lot of time, I'm self-employed, so I spend a lot of time in the tip, otherwise known as the office. Okay? So I won't hear the postman come. His new trick. Is he tells me the postman's been, the mail's been. And ladies and gentlemen, watch out on Facebook because it's the funniest and loveliest thing you've ever seen. And we've got 38 kilograms of black lab, ever so excited with his bomb next to the door and he's practicing about on all four poles. Lovely. So that's what they do. So they go, oh, and the other thing they do, with, with these we've just gone through, he takes me to that sound. Okay? If, it's, if he thinks it's danger, if it's a fire alarm or a smoke alarm, he tells me danger. And what he'll do is he'll pat me, as you'll see later on, you just see him do it, and then he drops, and he's saying danger, daddy, danger. And I have to work out what's going on. So then what happens, he, he goes away to school for three, three months. And then you come back and you spend the last week with your dog, and they train you to work with the dog. The dog knows what he's doing, it's you that needs to train. And then you take your dog home on the Friday. And on the Monday, someone knocks <coughs> on the door. And it's somebody from hearing dogs, once again, to carry on the training in your house, okay, at your place of work, and you organise your vets and all the rest of it. Then you go away, and then you you have the dog. But you have to monitor the dog throughout the time, and then when at a convenient time, when they're happy and you're happy, he takes his test. Unfortunately, now this isn't my first dog. My first dog was a Springer Spaniel. Those of us that have been gifted with Spaniels know that they're complete numbers. There only has to be a rabbit there within the last 15 years and the dog's gone. Bonnie was a spring of Spaniel and she was perfect in school. No. <laughs> but when we, where I was working at Cosford, Cosford's got an airfield. Where you've got an airfield, you've got rabbits. And it was getting really embarrassing calling out air traffic to find out where my dog had gone. Because she wouldn't come back. So we had to fail her. So that's what that emphasises where they were going with the rest of the dogs. And uh, when I went to see Bonnie, uh, when I went to see Nevis for the first time, I found out that Bonnie was uh, with a family with a big, living next to a big beach in the north of Wales, so you can see where the little body's gone. And that was eight years ago, ladies and gentlemen, so hopefully it's had a good life. And at a convenient time, back to the training, you take the test, and um, this is the March 2005, this is my ID card. This allows me to go anywhere I like with my dog. Okay? And then after this, he's now a fully qualified 
assistant doc, and he has been for eight years now. But he gets checked every year. And they check in that he responds to sounds, all the sounds that he's trained for. Okay? And now we're having a, a, an ongoing discussion with hearing dogs about his retirement. 